In this video, we're going to take a look at chemical equations, and more specifically what we call net ionic equations. So let's start off with what we would call a chemical equation, or what you've done so far this year. As you see right now, we have in our chemical equation, on the reactant side, we have lead 2 nitrate in the aqueous state. It's reacting with 2 moles of potassium chloride, also in the aqueous state. On the product side, we see that we form lead 2 chloride in the solid state and 2 moles of potassium nitrate in the aqueous state. This equation has all the information that we really need. We know what the reactants are, we know what the products are, we know what the states are, and we also know how many moles of everything we need to have for this reaction to occur. But this reaction actually has a little bit too much information for us. Another way of writing out this reaction would be to use what we call a complete ionic equation. Now a complete ionic equation shows us exactly how everything exists in a manner that's a little bit different than what the chemical equation is going to have. As we've discussed so far with solutions, we know that lead to nitrate as a solid, if we put it into a solution, it's going to be aqueous. And when it turns into this aqueous material, it's actually going to dissociate into two different ions, lead 2 ion and two nitrate ions. The same thing is true for the potassium chloride. If we put solid potassium chloride into water, it's going to dissociate into the ions potassium and chloride. Now since we are using aqueous lead 2 nitrate and aqueous potassium chloride as reactants, how they exist in this reaction actually is represented by the product side of these two reactions in, in showing how they dissolve in water. Our new equation, written in complete ionic equation form, is going to have the lead 2 ion plus 2 nitrate ions plus two potassium ions and two chloride ions. The reason why we have them all separated out is because this is how they actually exist. They don't exist as the compound lead, nitrate, and potassium chloride. They actually exist as these separate ions because when placed in water they are going to dissociate. Now on the product side, the lead 2 chloride would be represented as one thing. And the reason why is because lead 2 chloride is not soluble in water. So it's going to form a solid. Those ions that make up the lead 2 chloride are going to stay together. They are not going to separate apart. The potassium nitrate is also going to be represented on the product side as separate ions. In our chemical equation, potassium nitrate was aqueous. Since, again, it's going to be soluble in water, it will dissociate and separate into the ions of two nitrate ions and two potassium ions. We need the coefficients in this equation to be the same as what we had in our overall chemical equation and represent how many of each ion is, is present as the reaction takes place. So this is our complete ionic equation and it also has too much information. And in fact, I'm not going to ever ask you to write out a complete ionic equation. It really is not that much use to us. But the next equation, what we call a net ionic equation, is. In a net ionic equation, we start off with our complete ionic equation and we narrow it down. Our chemical equations represent an equation very similar to what you would have in math. What's on the left side of the equation can affect what's on the right side. In math, if you had like terms on opposite sides of the equal sign, you would cancel them out. And that's what we do in our chemical equation to form our net ionic equation. We have like terms of nitrate. There are two nitrate ions on each side of this chemical equation. What this chemical equation is essentially saying is that the two nitrate ions chemically are not changed. They start off with two nitrate ions aqueous. We end with two nitrate ions aqueous. The same thing is true of the potassiums. And because of that, they would also get canceled out. These ions that get canceled out are called spectator ions. Just like fans at a game of some sort, the fans are not participating in the game other than observing it. The players are the ones participating in a game. In this case, the potassium and nitrate are the spectators. They are not actually changing. 
but the lead and the chloride are. When we write this equation out using what's left behind, we will have the lead 2 ion in aqueous solution reacting with 2 moles of chloride ion in aqueous solution producing 1 mole of lead 2 chloride as a solid. This would be our net ionic equation. It represents only the things that are changing chemically. In fact, it really doesn't matter where the lead ions came from, and it doesn't really matter where the chloride ions came from. As long as we had aqueous solutions of each one, if those solutions were mixed together, the lead and the chloride would react to form the solid lead 2 chloride. Another example is the reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. In this reaction, we have aqueous hydrochloric acid, HCl, reacting with aqueous sodium hydroxide. It's going to produce sodium chloride in the aqueous state along with liquid water. If we write out the complete ionic equation for this, we will see that the hydrogens and the chlorides, they separate apart because it's aqueous. The sodium and the hydroxide will also separate apart. On the product side, the sodium and chloride are still in their ion form and we have water. We cancel out the things that are the same on both sides, in this case the sodium and the chloride ion, and our net ionic equation would be the hydrogen ion in aqueous form reacts with the hydroxide ion in aqueous form to produce water in the liquid state. Again, everything has to be exactly the same on both sides of the reaction to cancel out, and the things that are left behind, written out and balanced would represent our net ionic equation.